let's talk a little bit more about the five term acceleration formula here on the left you have it in all its glory and on the right i am going to show you the picture which motivated this discussion i have color coded here on the left the various five terms so just to remind us what does the five term formula do the five term formula provides the acceleration of a point p in an observer frame e0 here it is on the right the point p being measured through this vector in the observer frame e0 and this is done by measuring p's motion in a moving coordinate system a rotating and moving coordinate system e which in this figure is also the bfcs of a rigid body b this coordinate system has angular velocities uh, omega b and angular acceleration alpha b and the origin of this coordinate system is translating with respect to the observer so therefore the origin has velocity and acceleration so we will now try to understand the individual terms in the five term formula one by one the first term ap rel this is the acceleration of the point p as measured in the coordinate system e which is the bfcs as i have said of this rigid body the second term in dark green omega cross omega cross r this rpg is the location of point p with respect to the origin of the bfcs of body b this is called the centripetal acceleration and it should remind you of that given that it has a structure of omega square r so here on the right i can quickly draw the direction of this omega cross omega cross r it must be in the direction of the pink arrow towards g pointing from p to g the third term in lighter green is the angular acceleration which again bears similarity to a term which we have seen when we were studying circular motion alpha r except now it is in 3d so it is alpha cross r again the r is the location of point p with respect to the bfcs origin the fourth term in pink this is the most controversial term in the sense that it is the hardest to understand is called the coriolis acceleration the fifth term in red ag is the acceleration of the origin of the bfcs as measured in the observer frame and that is because the rigid body not only rotates with respect to the observer but also moves with respect to the observer and is the location of which is measured by this vector rgo so these are the five terms of the five term formula let me try and now discuss terms second third and fourth in a little bit more detail and see if i can help you gain some physical insight into their presence we begin with the two terms omega cross omega cross r plus alpha cross r as i will now show you these two terms reflect the error made in measuring the acceleration of p in a rotating frame and these correct for the obviously missed rotational effects so to see this in a very simple way let's uh, consider a rotating disk so here is a rotating disk and let me attach to the disk its bfcs here is the bfcs and that's e1 and that's e2 and the disk is rotating let's say at omega b and the angular acceleration alpha b i also have a fixed frame which has unit vectors e1 and e2 the origin of both these frames is the same g and o and i am going to consider a point p which is attached to the disk and it's at a distance of r and i have the usual polar coordinates er and e theta clearly the e3 and capital e3 uh, axis come out of the paper and are parallel this is a 2d problem and i have only chosen it to illustrate how these two terms converge to things that we actually understand rather well so uh, let's say we want to write down the acceleration of p 
well relative to the fixed frame point p is going in a circle so the acceleration of p is something that we know it is mon minus omega b square r e r plus alpha b r e theta so this is something that we have understood very well note i have used the fact that omega b must be omega b e3 and alpha b must be alpha b e3 as is the case for a 2d problem and small e3 and capital e3 are parallel but now let us say i wanted to use the five term formula what will i see if i want to use a five term formula i should immediately notice that if i was sitting in the bfcs then point p will look to be stationary that means that the first term ap rel will be zero i am now writing down terms coming from this the second term will be omega b cross omega b cross r p g the third term will be alpha b cross r p g the fourth term will vanish for the same reason that ap rel vanished in the bfcs frame point p will appear to be fixed so that the relative velocity of p to the bfcs is zero so the third term also goes away ag also vanishes because the origins of the red frame and the black frame the observer frame and the bfcs are the same so what i get then is that this equation must be true so now we can see that these two terms must be the same and you can actually write down expressions for rpg rpg is r in the er direction omega b is omega b e3 and carry out these cross products and show that this must be true so what have we understood in the rotating frame point p is fixed because p is attached to the frame in the fixed frame in the observer frame point p is going in a circle so these two terms on the left here in green are the corrections that we must make to the measurements in the rotating frame small ei to correct for the fact that we made the measurement in a rotating frame so that's how we understand these two green terms okay so it's rather straightforward i measure something in the rotating frame i want the answer in a fixed frame i must correct my measurement in the rotating frame by adding back objects like omega cross omega cross r and alpha cross r measurements that i have missed because i was rotating okay so that's the second and third terms let's now try and understand the coriolis term to some extent the coriolis term to omega cross v rel is hard to understand because it comes from two sources we can see that by scrolling up and looking at the derivation so this was the formula that we obtained here on the right that we obtained for ap in this this term the first term and the third term we calculated separately the first term gave omega cross v rel that was one of them here on the left there are two of them the first one came from the time derivative of v rel so that's the first contribution to the coriolis acceleration the second contribution to the coriolis acceleration comes from the third term which i computed here further down omega cross drpg by dt and here it is again on the right side this was a second contribution to the coriolis acceleration so what does this mean so the coriolis acceleration arises from our measuring the rate of change of the vector vp rel and the vector rpg in a rotating frame that's what we are doing over here i am trying to compute the acceleration of p in a fixed frame in a observer frame by 
relating it to measurements made only in the rotating frame this is a measurement of vp rel but the time derivative is in the observer frame so when i converted this time derivative to something which was completely in the rotating frame i automatically picked up a correction factor which corresponded to half of the coriolis acceleration let me say it again i am trying to compute the rate of change of vp rel but because i have only access to the rate of change of vp rel in the rotating frame i need to compensate for my measurement which i have done in the rotating frame by a correction which is part of the coriolis acceleration it is the same story in the third term i need to compute the rate of change of rpg the location of point p with respect to the origin of the bfcs this time rate of change is in the observer frame i don't have access to it i have access to time derivatives in the rotating frame in e and when i use that i need to have a correction which comes in the form of omega cross v rel that is the second source in the coriolis acceleration to omega cross v rel the fact that there are two sources makes it hard to understand however the importance of coriolis acceleration is immense especially in for example geophysical flows where ocean currents and wind currents are often affected by the earth's rotation okay so that's the five term formula let's end the lecture by now looking at an application of this